Hey guys, Vivius, and welcome back to another video. Now, this is going to be showing you guys uh, how to complete the Fate of the Gods quest as quickly as you can, essentially just being like a guide or some sort of um, tutorial, not, not really tutorial, just some sort of walkthrough to help you guys through the quest. So the skill requirements you'll be needing for this quest is 67 summoning, 73 agility, 75 divination, which is not boostable, 76 slayer, which is not boostable, and then you've got 79 magic. And the essential items you'll be needing uh, are a fully char well, it's recommended that you have a fully charging Gramina. Uh, you will be needing a face mask, or you can use mask earmuffs, you can use a Slayer helmet, a uh, mask of the Cura, mask of mourning, mask of dust, mask of reflection, or any some sort of uh, other helm variants. And you'll be needing a familiar that can carry as much food as possible because you'll be running around the dark place inside with all the lightning bolts and stuff. I also highly recommend bringing the best familiar you can. In my case, it's obviously a Pakiak because I'm 96 summoning, but if you have a war tortoise, that's also very, very useful. Just something that can carry a lot more food because you'll be needing a lot of food. Now, you're going to be defeating four different enemies as well. Now, for the completionist cape, you have, you have to kill the four different uh, Nihil separately. Uh, you have to kill them at the same time. So, essentially, once they're all attacking you, uh, you can kill them all, then you'll be able to get the completion skate requirement. But I really, really don't recommend doing that if you're just trying to complete the quest because it is quite challenging. Now, the Nihils are essentially the same as Nex, um, with like little, in little, uh, little surprise packages. The Shadow Nihil is essentially like the Shadow Phase, and then the Smoke is like the Smoke Phase, Blood is like the Blood Phase, and Ice is like the Ice Phase. I'll be going over this boss fight, you know, later on in the quest. Uh, be sure to check the description to see what time, uh, what time the video the bosses are, so just make sure you have a little look down there, and I'll be able to explain to you how to do the boss fight. So to begin the quest, you want to be using the Eagle's Peak Lowstone if you have that. Um, the, alternatively, you can use the Dueling Ring to teleport to... Uh, mobilizing armies, then use the spirit tree to teleport to the uh, troll stronghold, then run south out of the troll stronghold, and then a little bit west to Azandra. So you want to speak to Azandra and then run through the text, then choose the first option, and then accept the quest. Once again, scroll through the text, and then Siliske will appear. So speak to him. Then you want to choose the first option, and then scroll through the text. And then he'll essentially change the world to a little bit darker. And then you want to speak to Siliske once again. Then choose the first option. Scroll through the text. Then choose the second option and scroll through the text. And then choose the third option. So you essentially just want to be choosing all the options. And then of course you want to be choosing the fourth option. And then choose the second option. And then three little pictures will appear on the pillar just next to you. Now the three pictures located on the pillar are the three pictures you'll need to be putting into the world gate to unlock the world gate. Now to put them in the world gate, you actually uh, you have to approach the two controls. The left one, uh, or the one to the east I believe is the one that's going to rotate it left. And then the one to the west is going to rotate it to the right. It's kind of like a lock where if you click the left one it kind of scrolls to the left. And then if you click the right control it scrolls to the right. But you want to be copying those three pictures located on the pillar going from top to bottom, so the very top one is going to be the first one you're in the lock, and then you want to go right to the second one, and then hit the left controls to go to the third one, so I'll just re I'll just repeat that. So you want to hit the right controls until you hit the first picture, then you want to hit the left controls until you hit the middle picture, then you want to hit the right controls once again to hit the third picture, and that will unlock the end gate. So once you've done that, you want to head through the end gate, the familiar full of food, as well as your inventory uh, full of food, then you want to run straight up to the north, and if you're going for completion escape, I highly recommend picking up these crystals as well. I was a complete rookie and I ended up, you know, I I caught some of the crystals and then I just destroyed them afterwards. So I don't know if I can actually get the completion escape at this stage uh, because there have been glitches where if you've collected the crystals and just destroyed them, um, they become, they just, they just disappear completely. So I'm not sure if I'm able to get those crystals back. But once you've collected the crystal, uh, you want to head southeast and then go across the little uh, bridge or chasm looking thing. Make sure you jump twice over the little gap. Then you want to make your way southeast and then climb up the little stairs. And then make your way northeast following that path again. And then collect that crystal for the completionist cape. And you also get a cosmetic override, I believe, if you do it again. But then again, the cosmetic overrides aren't completely aesthetically pleasing in this game. So, you know, that's up to you. And then you want to run a little bit southeast and then jump down the little drop. And then this is like a little healing portal. Now, I, I really do recommend... Uh, you know, using this portal if you're low HP and if you're low level, because basically you just you'll end up using less food, so you have more chance of survival, and it's just a great way of getting hit points up without doing anything, and it's completely free, so that's always good. Then you want to jump west over these little lava rocks, or all the you want to jump west over little rock-looking things from the lava pool, and then head up, 
then hub, head up the cliffside, and then follow the path northeast. So it starts east, and then it goes north. And then make sure you jump down the little gap as well if you want to hit that crystal for completion escape. So if you collect the crystal, you want to jump down the little. You want to jump down the drop and then west again over the bridge, and then follow the same path you did before. So like I said before, you want to, you want to be running northeast up the little northern uh, little northern passage, and then do a little sneaky little wall run over these rocks. Make sure you're um, staying well away from those little lava pools as possible because they do deal quite a bit of damage. Uh, but once you've gone down the little cliffside, you want to head northeast to collect the crystal if you're going for completion escape. But if not, then run southwest and follow the path. So do a sneaky little slide down this uh, little slope and make your way west. And try and avoid that little lava squirting McGee thing there because, you know, it does deal quite a bit of damage. And if you can avoid that, you know, uh, you know, it's always good using less food. But if somehow you manage to get caught up in that, you want to be just be chilling in the little healing uh, portal McGee thing. So in this area, there are quite a few crystals. So if you're going for the completion escape, have a look around to collect those crystals because you don't want to be coming back into this place afterwards to collect them. But if you're solely just com uh, looking to complete the quest, just make sure you run a little bit southwest and then south around the corner and then north up the little... up the cliffside and then north up the... It looks like a broken tree kind of, but it's it's a massive walkway. But then you want to run east and then follow the pathway to the northeast. And then where it's like a little red dot on the minimap, you want to be climbing down the drop. So just head east, or if you want to collect the crystal, run all, uh, run northwest and go around the bend. But if you just want to complete the quest, uh, head east and then and then climb the obstacle. Across the lava, uh, lava waterfall, well I guess it's the lava fall. <laughs> But then just go through the cave, but if you want that crystal, head northeast and then grab the crystal and then run straight back into the little cave. So the next bit is quite easy. Uh, what you're going to be doing is essentially matching pictures up with other pictures. So the blue circle in the middle, I guess, is the main big bubba. And the purple circles like the baby circles on the outside. And you want to be linking up the pictures with the corresponding pictures on the purple circles. So the blue circles must be matching the purple circles. And whenever you click the purple circle, it rotates clockwise. And all you want to be doing is matching on the pictures. So once you uh, muck around with this a little bit, you'll be able to complete this bit. And then you can move along. Now, there are three waves of this, I believe. And every wave, more purple circles have writing on them. So just complete this, and then you'll be able to move on. Now, the next part of the quest is obviously the most difficult because you have to be killing the four in the hills. And at the beginning, I tried to do the completion of crate requirement, which required me to attack all of the, all of the in the hills and then kill them. Um, while they're all attacking me but that really didn't turn out too well because I nearly ran out of food and I basically almost got dropped so make, make sure if you're just doing the quest attack one at a time because it is very very easy if you just attack one at a time so I really do recommend doing that now for the fight if you've done next you'll know exactly what to do but for those that haven't done next the ice in the hill actually freezes you so I do recommend using the anticipate ability because it does prevent any stuns and also, if you can't use the Anticipate in time, you want to be using the Freedom Ability, so make sure those two abilities are on your taskbar. So throughout the entire fight, you want to be making sure you keep well away from the other three in the hills while you're fighting the one. And to do that, I recommend standing almost on the outskirts, and while you're attacking the um, Ice in the Hill, for example, because that's the one you're going to be killing first, you want to be keeping an eye on, on the minimap, looking for the yellow yellow dots and seeing which direction they're running and making sure you avoid those hills because if they run straight past you they're going to deal quite a bit of damage and obviously you want to have as less damage as possible dealt to you because you've only got limited food and you don't want to die first time. So I use mage for this fight just simply because it, it seemed to wreck and you can always have a look at my um, my ability bar. Now I've got rejuvenate there, I do recommend using that at the very very beginning of the fight. As soon as you're low HP, just use Rejuvenate straight away. I've also got some other abilities, like the defense abilities like you see there. Now, Barricade is really, really good as well. If you're full of Adrenaline and you just don't take any damage, that will last for about 10 seconds, I believe. 5 or 10 seconds, and you don't take any damage at all. So that gives you a very, very nice opportunity to opportunity to make sure your health is very, very high, as well as being able to restore your prayer and re-overload, for example, if you need to. 
but I also use the portent of restoration, I believe. So that's like uh, almost a, it's almost like a sign of life, uh, but it actually heals you. So it's like a basically food. So I just recommend bringing a food if you can. And throughout the entire ice phase, make sure you're always using Anticipate, and if the ice in the hill freezes you, make sure you use that freedom, freedom ability. But just continue to attack it with Fire Wave, and you should be able to drop the ice in the hill very, very quickly. The next in the hill you're going to be killing is the Shadow in the hill. Now you have to be playing range against this in the hill, and making sure you always watch your player, because a little uh, dark spot spawn underneath you, and if you, stay, if you remain on that square, you'll be dealt quite a bit of damage. So make sure as soon as those little dark spots spawn underneath you, uh, just move away, just move one square away from that. And I recommend moving back and forth the square, perhaps, because, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, running, you know, all the way across the room. All you have to do is click one square to the left or one square to the right or north or south. It's up to you, but make sure you avoid those shadows attack and protect from range. And you'll be able to kill the Nihil quite easily. Just make sure you keep your eyes on those shadows, like on the floor, like I've just said 15 million times, and you should be able to drop the Nihil, Nihil quite easily. Now, the Smoke Nihil is quite simple as well. You just protect from magic and use, you know, your best offensive magic abilities. And you should be able to drop him pretty easy. I believe his only special attack is by poisoning you. I'm not quite sure on that one. But I didn't really take notice because he died so easily. And he's quite, you know, he's quite an easy Nihil to kill. But the Blood Nihil is probably the most difficult, if not the Ice Nihil. Because the Ice Nihil is, well actually, the Ice Nihil is probably the most difficult if you're, um, if you're new to Nex or if you've never done it before. But the Blood Nihil, all you have to do is make sure you keep attacking him. But if you've done Nex before, you'll know how Nex siphons. Now this Blood Nihil does exactly the same, so as soon as the Blood Nihil like looks up and looks like it's siphoning, which will be after a few attacks, make sure you just don't attack it because every attack you will deal will actually heal the Nihil, so that's obviously more damage to deal afterwards. So make sure as soon as the Blood Nihil siphons, just stay well away from it and try to get as much DPS as you can because essentially, you know, this Nihil is quite easy. Once you've defeated the Nihils, you want to make your way through the little passageway to the north and then you'll be greeted with this massive room. So make your way over to the northeast and then head down the little passageway but then you'll be stopped by old mate and then teleported to this gypsy land where you have to speak to Zaros. So have a little chat with him. I believe it doesn't really matter what options you choose to complete the quest so whatever options you choose won't affect the quest line itself but it may affect some sort of dialogue if you're looking to um, just, you know, read all the text and trying to get some sort of storyline out of it, but I'm just trying to rush through the quest as quick as I can to get all the rewards and to get the completion escape. So spend through the text and choose whatever options you wish. And then you'll be teleported back into the original room. Now, I recommend banking, so before this area, like once you've killed in the hills, I recommend just, you know, getting out of there and then rebanking, filling filling up your yak with food, for example, and then making your way back because this next bit is a massive, massive tank fest, and you want to be lowering the monsters' HPs to you know as small as you can because because the big boss, you know, that the big head that's like north of you, it actually does a massive attack every now and again, and if you lower the monsters' HPs, it'll just wipe out all the monsters if you've lowered all their HPs, and you know it just means less attacking for you. But like I said before, this boss fight is just a massive tank fest. The aim of this boss fight is to deplete the health of the dude by just standing there. So you can you can essentially just stand there the entire time and use defensive abilities to save your hit points. But I recommend killing the monsters around the room because they deal quite a bit of damage. But some very, very useful abilities for this one is the re Renaissance ability as well as the preparation to, uh, regenerate, the, to regenerate the... Um, Renaissance ability. I'm not even sure if it's called Renaissance, but Barricade is very, very useful as well. I didn't actually realize that I could be using Barricade until the very, very end of the fight because I almost ran out of food. I nearly, nearly died on this stage because I killed in the hills and then I went straight into this room. But I like, like I said before, I recommend banking and getting a lot more food because it'll make your life a lot, lot less stressful because I nearly died and I was thinking, you know, if I have to die, I've got to go rebank and then come all the way back. Um, and I've already gone through, you know, a lot of the boss fight and I don't want to repeat all of that I've done. So make sure you come back with a lot, a lot of food. Um, but the best way to complete this stage is basically attacking the monsters with your magic abilities because I found magic was always the best. And if you ever get the ranging monsters, protect from range because Ganodermic is very, very sh strong against magic attacks and melee attacks. Just make sure you protect from range as I use Ganodermic. Now, I really do recommend using Ganodermic because it's a tank armor and you'll, you'll eat less food and you'll just save, you know, it'll make your life less, less stressful. So once you've gone through this stage, you want to head down the little crevice to the northeast, and you know, you'll, you won't be stopped this time, so just make your way down there. And this next bit is just basically divination, so you'll be giving this, um, this gypsy stick of doom, you just have to pick it up in the floor, and there's little, like, essentially nose floating around the room. Now to collect the nose, because you're going to be after collecting, I think it's 250 of these nose, you want to be 
poking the stick in the ground, and then I found the best way was to world hop, and to actually connect the and to actually collect the nodes, I recommend um, spiking the stick in the ground and waiting for the nodes to go near the stick. Because I tried running after the nodes and then placing the stick down um, near the near the nodes, but they kept just floating away like little bitches. But make sure make sure you just uh, poke the stick down wherever you want and then camp it and wait for a node to. Uh, become I guess enhanced because it changes color and becomes a little bit brighter and it glows a little bit brighter So wait for it to do that and then you can collect the notes You'll need 250 energies to complete the next bit and you also get energies for uh, Converting them in the massive memory gypsy McGee thing I don't even know what it's called the massive emery the massive memory thing in the middle the massive crater Let's say but this would take you a little while like I said before I really recommend just world topping because it's quite easy if you have like a bunch of randoms on your friends list, that also helps because I use the world hopping technique to get 99 mining. So I recommend using that technique with, you know, this divination part of the quest because it speeds up things greatly. But once you've hit that 250 energies, you want to be making your way back up the little place where you climb down. And then I think it's just left click the energies and you create some sort of boon and then speak to Zaros, the little ball thing. And you are basically done the quest here, guys. So just scroll through all the text, you'll be put back near the world gate and then exit the world gate. And you'll be put in some sort of purple ass cut screen. Cut screen? Cut scene. So make sure you just hold space bar through the text. And you should be able to complete the quest. So hopefully you enjoyed this video guys. If you did please give it a like. And share it with all of your friends. And you know hopefully you did enjoy this video guys. Uh, subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video.